Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna go over the top five most costly mistakes that most freshman engineering students make. Let's go. Everybody makes mistakes, but I think we all know that some mistakes are a little bit more costly than others. And so when it comes to studying an engineering or STEM discipline, there's no exception. There are some mistakes that are pretty hard to recover from, which is especially evident when you find out that 20% of students drop out their freshman year. I want to help you avoid those mistakes. That's why I'm making this video. So with that, let's jump into the five most costly mistakes that most freshman students make. Mistake number one, the assumption that you can get by with the same level of effort that got you through high school. Everybody enters college with some expectation of the level of effort that it's gonna to take to succeed. And that level usually corresponds to whatever it took to succeed in your high school. That level is a little bit different for everybody, but whatever your level is, it's what your body and mind have become accustomed to. It's become your expectation moving forward, and that's the mistake. You need to completely reset that expectation, totally erase it, and replace it with the expectation that the new level of effort is going to be very, very, very high. Even if you're one of the lucky few that has a proper level of expectation, uh, that's used to putting out this level of work and effort, it's still a good idea for you to expect that it's gonna be higher in college. Over preparation never killed anybody. So it's always better to have to correct your level of effort downward, right? Because if you have to correct your level of effort upward, it likely means that you probably had some bad exam scores and that's not how you wanna start things off. Also, as a side note, if you're a little worried about this level of workload that I'm talking about, you shouldn't be. I made a whole video about why you should actually look forward to it. So you can check that one out here. Mistake number two, not taking your exams seriously enough. These Legos, represent all the points that you can earn in a given course. Let's say the white Lego is a project, big project. The black Lego is some labs that you have to do. The yellow Legos are your homework. And the red Legos are your exams. Now this is pretty typical of an engineering or STEM course. Your exams are worth about 60 to 70. I've even had courses where they are 90% of your final grade. So let's say this is one midterm. That's another midterm. And then this is your final. So each one represents 20% of your overall grade. So even though your professors go over that with you like the first week of class, right? They go over your point distributions. A lot of new students, myself included, will end up having to fail an exam or perform really badly before that fact really sinks into their head, right? That your exams mean a lot. And failing an exam can really leave you feeling inadequate and unmotivated. If you ever failed an exam, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I really wanna save you from learning that lesson the hard way. So let me make something really clear. Your number one priority while you're in school should be your exam performance. Number one, right? Because if you don't perform, consistently perform well on exams, you're just not gonna graduate. So the time and energy and effort that you put into things should be proportional to how valuable those things are, right? So let's say you have a class where your exams account for 60% of your final grade. Your time and effort and energy should really be dedicated in large portion to those exams, right? Because they account for the majority of your final grade. Speaking of exams, I've already done a longer video on exam performance and how to really prepare for any exam. So you can check that one out here. So I think I'll end this one by saying, you will never regret over preparing for an A, but you will always regret under preparing for a D or an F. Hey, I hope you liked the video so far. If you are, make sure you hit that like button and share it with your friends. Maybe leave a comment so I know I'm not just talking to myself. You are one pathetic loser. And if you or anyone you know is looking to study engineering or some other STEM discipline, I wrote this book for you. It represents every hard lesson and the road I took to go from a 2.0 to a 4.0 and a master's degree in engineering. It really is a comprehensive guide for anybody to have success in engineering or any other STEM discipline. And it's getting a great response so far. It's got a 4.7 out of five stars 
on Amazon, so be sure to check it out. It's available in ebook, paperback, and audiobook, so I'll put links in the description for everything. Thanks for the support, and back to the video. Mistake number three, assuming that you're the only one struggling. One of the worst and most costly mistakes you can make while you're in school is assuming that you're the only one struggling because it can lead to you expecting less of yourself, low self-esteem, and feelings like you don't belong. The reality is that everybody struggles, okay? It may not look like it, you know, a lot of your classmates might look like they have everything together, but I promise you, at some point, they will be struggling, right? It might not be right now, it might be in the future, it might be with some other subject, it might be in a different way. Everybody struggles, okay? So do not make the mistake of thinking that you're by yourself in your struggles. Again, pursuing an engineering or STEM degree is not easy, right? So your life will not be super comfortable while you're pursuing this degree, especially in the beginning when you're gonna to need to adapt your mindset and your habits the most. But I think you should take comfort in the fact that you're all in this together, right? You are not the only one having a hard time. It's not meant to be easy, but try to embrace the suck, right? Try to allow it and embrace the fact that it's gonna mold you into a better and stronger person. Mistake number four, overloaded schedule. You know, freshman students come into school with the uh, unfortunate disadvantage of not having any experience. And this lack of experience can lead to some poor decision making. And one of the poorest decisions that you can make is the decision to overload your schedule. This is fine. You'll have these new students start who are super confident because they were 4.0 students in high school. So they'll take on like 17 or 20 credits thinking they're gonna graduate earlier. And then it ends up backfiring super hard, right? I've seen this backfire so many times. You'll get like a month or two into the semester and they're just completely you know, overwhelmed with the massive workload. They weren't prepared for it, right? They'll end up failing a course or barely passing everything at the expense of their mental and physical health. So say it with me, sustainability, right? Your degree, just accept that your degree is gonna take four to five, maybe even longer years to complete, okay? So you must find a pace where you can maintain your health and your grades. I actually did a longer video on this exact topic, how to develop sustainability while you're in school. You can check that one out in the description, along with all the other videos I've referenced. And last but not least, mistake number five, not taking advantage of all your resources. Look, I get it. You know, just starting at a college or a university can be pretty overwhelming. You know, all that information gets thrown at you in the first couple weeks. It can be kind of like trying to drink through a fire hose. Hey, Chris, you think it's safe to drink from a fire hose? Why not, Dad? It's just water. All right, well, turn it on. I'm very thirsty. A lot of it goes unutilized and unabsorbed, right? And that's probably okay if you're studying a less intense discipline. But if you're looking to graduate with an engineering or STEM degree, then it's very important that you utilize and take advantage of all your resources. And every school is a little bit different. So the list of resources will change a little bit depending on your school. But I wanna go over four uh, universal resources, universal things that every new student should be taking advantage of. Okay, first, tutoring center. Every school, every college should have a math tutoring center. And if you're lucky, they'll have a degree specific tutoring center. So either way, you should be taking advantage of whatever tutoring center your school offers, at least math, right? You don't wanna let yourself struggle for too long without seeking out help because that's just a waste of time. It's a free resource and 100% should be taken advantage of. The second resource that everybody should be utilizing is study groups, okay? The material you guys are studying and the workload you guys are taking on is gonna be way hard enough on its own. So do yourself a favor and don't go at it alone. A study group is like a hive mind, right? One day you'll be struggling and learning from a member that understands what's going on and then the next day you'll be the one teaching everyone. Everybody benefits. But I think one of the most beneficial things about a study group, you know, assuming that the members of your study group are motivated and, and uh, looking to improve, the most beneficial thing is that it creates accountability, right? Uh, all the members of your study group want to help everybody else out and keep everybody on track. You know, all ships rise with the tide sort of thing. Number three, the third resource 
is your professors. It may seem kind of obvious, but you know, I think a lot of new students, a lot of freshmen may feel a little, you know, apprehensive, maybe a little intimidated when they first start school uh, of their professors, right? But you are the customer. Never ever forget that you guys are the customers and your professors are paid to help you. So utilize them. So if you have questions after class or, or some other time where you're doing homework, all of your professors should have office hours where you're able to go chat with them, get problems worked out, whatever. And if you're not able to attend those, email them, call them, text them, anything you can, right? I didn't, I was dumb and I didn't really start to take advantage of this until I was in my graduate degree. And oh my gosh, I, it made things so much easier. I, I attended office hours like every day and I forced my professors to help me until I understood what was going on. They might, you know, they might kind of make you feel stupid a little bit, but brush it off, whatever. Take advantage of your professors. They know everything. Go to the source. Okay, number four, the last resource is your academic advisor, right? Every school should have a team of academic advisors that are, you know, part of your degree. And if you're lucky, there'll be a freshman specific academic advisor. So make sure you set a meeting with them as soon as you start school. So these advisors have seen it all, right? They know every uh, issue that people have dealt with. They know every kind of common problem that people have. They know the whole list of resources that everybody should be taking advantage of. Open your mind, open your you know ears and listen, right? Set up a meeting, listen to everything they have to say and implement their advice. So there you have it. Those are the five biggest mistakes that new engineering and STEM students make. Let me know what you guys think, if you agree with me or if I missed one here or there. Uh, I hope by watching this, that some of you avoid some of these mistakes. But that's it for now. Make sure you check the description for all the videos I referenced and for a link to my book. So until next time, thanks for watching and keep up the good work.